Working with RESTful APIs and making HTTP requests is the bread and butter of almost every developer. If you are coming from Android, you probably know about Retrofit. iOS developers, as I am told, have the Alamo Fire library. On Flutter though, you usually use the HTTP package which comes directly from the Dart team or something like Dio. Although these packages do an awesome job, they still leave you working at the lowest level. The question arises. What can we, Flutter developers, use to simplify our work with HTTP APIs? Chopper! Hello, welcome to Resale Coder. This is the first part of the Chopper series where you are going to learn how to use the awesome Chopper library to simplify your work with HTTP APIs in Dart. In this first part, we are going to build an app which will take data from JSON placeholder API which will simply display multiple posts here inside a list view and it will also show a detail of a particular post. So the first part covers setup and basics and later on we are going to touch on things like interceptors and converters and then integrating with build value or maybe even JSON serializable. So there is really a lot to learn here. And be sure to check out the written tutorial from the link in the description where you can also find all of the code written in this video and links to the libraries. As always, we are starting off in a clean new Flutter project, so we have only the main.dart file with the default code here, so we need to set up our project to work with Chopper. For that, we want to go to pubspec YAML and add a bunch of dependencies here. The first thing which we are going to add is Chopper, Actually, the latest version is 2.4.1 as of the date of recording. And of course, link to the libraries are all available in the written tutorial. But adding Chopper to just these dependencies is not enough because Chopper is a library which generates code. So in addition to adding Chopper, we also need to add the Chopper generator, which will actually facilitate the code generation. And usually you put your generators not into dependencies, but into dev dependencies so that they do not get packed together with the app once you build it and ship it to your users devices, because users really do not care about some builder. They only care about the chopper library itself. So we want to add chopper generator here and also build the runner. And to use the latest version of the build runner, you just leave the version empty. This will make sure that you always have the latest version of that particular package. And lastly, in addition to Chopper itself, we are going to use the provider package to make inherited widget syntax simple. Because this app is only centered around showcasing Chopper, we are not going to have a full blown state management over here. But still, we want to keep things nice and tidy, even though we are not going to solely focus on state management. If you want to learn more about state management, check out a video about block because block is, in my opinion, the best state management option for Flutter. So let's add provider here. Once we save and the packages are gotten from the servers, we can get to working with the API. As I've already said, the API we are going to work with in this tutorial series is JSON placeholder because it is really simple to use and it's just perfect for our demonstration purposes. So go to jsonplaceholder.typeco.com and over here we can see some of the things we can do with it. For example, down here, if I zoom in, we can see that the endpoints are posts, comments, albums, photos, to do's, users. We are only going to use the posts endpoints. So if we click on post here or even down here, we can get multiple posts which returns a JSON. Every post has title and body. This is what we are the most interested in. And then we can also get just a single post like that. And also we can post to posts. We are going to post to posts, even though this is only a placeholder API. So nothing can be really added to these posts, but still the post request is possible. And then you can also do put and patch and delete requests as you wish. Once we know which kind of an API we're going to be working with, 
let's create a chopper service because that's where most of the code regarding chopper will reside. We are going to create a new folder under lib, let's call it data, just to separate our classes a bit and inside that data folder we are going to create post API service dot dart and this file will hold post API service which will extend chopper service so let's add a class post API service which will extend chopper service and let's import chopper service by importing chopper package and we want to make this class abstract that's because as you already know by now chopper works by generating code and the actual implementation of this class will be inside a generated class not directly inside of pose api service that's why we can afford or actually have to make this class abstract actually in order to make the code generation possible we need to create a part statement here and this will direct the generator of the code to a file which will be sort of an accompanying file to this post api service dart main file the file which we are going to specify here is where the generated class will be so let's say post api service dot chopper dot dart and of course currently we have errors here because that file doesn't yet exist but it will be generated in just a little while in order to make this class actually work with chopper we need to mark it with an annotation saying chopper api so add chopper api and this takes in a base url so what is the base url for what we are trying to accomplish here well it's the url for the json placeholder api more precisely for the posts endpoint so let's go again back to the browser and where we are getting all of the posts we are going to copy this url and paste it over to vs code as i have already briefly outlined what we want to do is to get all of the posts to display them inside a list to get only a single post to display the detail page of the post and also to perform fake post requests to basically just call post on the server but nothing will be really added but this is what this uh, floating action button with the plus icon will do fake posting of the posts so for that we need to create three dart methods which will represent the three http methods which we are going to call on that http api so the first function is get posts and the question arises now what should this function return well it's going to return a future but this future needs to contain something right and that something for now is simply response this is absolutely not type save the response will just hold dynamic thing but later on in this series but later on in this series you're gonna learn how to work with chopper in a type safe way so for example if we create some model class like this class post which will hold a string body and a string title and so on we'll be actually able to put a post over here inside response post like this we're gonna leave it for later just know that something like this is possible you can actually achieve really simple and straightforward type safety with the chopper api for now let's work with dynamic data because this is only the first part after all but just creating this method get posts is not enough because this is only a dart method but we need to indicate to the chopper service which kind of an http method it should actually represent the method we are talking about here is get so we need to mark it with add get and it can take in headers and also path we do not need to specify any headers nor any path because 
this get request get post will happen directly on the base URL so we can leave the constructor empty then another method is get post in singular so again future response response get post and this will again be a get annotated method but this time we want to specify its path to be a string containing ID but this ID is dynamically assignable for that we need to put it inside curly braces in the string that's because getting the single post happens by specifying its ID so if we go to the browser just a quick demonstration here we have the first post with ID 1 if I change the URL to end with 2 and not 1 we're gonna get the second post then 3 we're gonna get the third post and so on in order to change the ID dynamically we need to put the ID inside curly braces and now how are we going to actually pass that ID into the string to make the proper request well we need to specify a parameter int ID but not just like this simply we also need to annotate this parameter ID with a path annotation so again add path and we also need to specify string here ID so what this annotation add path will do is that oh I am annotated with add path with ID name so whatever the value of this int ID is I'm going to pass it over to the path in the URL and also this is a good place to mention query parameters since we are not going to use them in this app but if you have an API which requires you to work with query parameters you just specify add query and also its name here so for example Q and then you add for example string and its name and doing this will take this string and turn it into a query parameter in the request we are however not going to use any query parameters so we can just delete what I've just written and lastly we're going to perform a pose request which again will return future response so let's actually just copy it from up here and it's gonna be called quite funnily post post and this will take in a body but we first need to mark it with add post and of course put and patch requests and delete requests are done in the same manner you just annotate them so put and patch but again we are not going to use them here and also delete you can add delete too of course but we want to have just get get and post and post put and patch requests require that you put a body inside them and this body will contain the post which we are trying to add to the server the way that you can get some data some object to the server using HTTP is by putting it over to the body of the request so let's annotate with body and the object which we are going to send to the server will currently be only a map containing string and dynamic that's because we currently don't have any post type any post class but again later on we are going to add type safety to this app for now let's just work with map of string dynamic and let's call it body we have specified everything for code generation to work but before we generate the code let's just focus for a while on something which I want to showcase here because again we are not going to use it in this simple demonstration of an app but in your real projects you might want to use headers headers are simply a way to pass additional data to the server bundled in the request for example authentication is where the data is sent through headers and obviously also many other things so if you want to work with headers you can either add them to the method annotation here so we will just specify headers and it's going to be a map containing the name ABC and value maybe CBA and then you can also add headers to 
the Dart method itself. This can be done by annotating with header in here. You need to specify the header's name. So again, header name and the value of a header, which is specified inside the parameter list is inside the parameter itself. So for example, string header value. So inside the method parameters, you specify some changeable headers, which can change their value and the headers specified inside the annotation are useful for non changeable headers. For example, content type, when it is, for example, plain text or text plain as it's properly formatted. So text plain, this is the perfect place for a constant kind of a header. You can take a deeper look at this from the written tutorial, which is available from the link in the video description. But simply just know that this is also possible. Headers are also available if you use the chopper package. With this additional information about headers out of the way, we can now generate code, which will be placed inside post API service .dart. Source generation or source gen is triggered if we go into the terminal and write flutter packages pub run build runner with an underscore. And then you can either build for a one off build or also watch and watching will perform a new build each and every time a file with this part directive is updated. It's saved with something new contained inside of it. So let's say watch and hit enter and the new file will be generated called pose API service chopper dart. And surely after some time we have the new file over here. If we take a look at it, it contains a constructor which takes in a chopper client and then it has all of the methods which we have specified and they contain their implementation, which we absolutely do not have to deal with. The methods which we have written inside the post API service just specify what to fetch, but all of the fetching logic, which will actually trigger the HTTP request is contained inside chopper client. This chopper client, which we can even see that it needs to be passed into the constructor of post API service is built on top of the default HTTP client, which comes from the Dart team. If we take a look at that, we can see that it uses the HTTP client from package HTTP.dart. What we need to do in order to use the post API service to simplify our work with the JSON placeholder API is to somehow connect it together with the chopper client by passing the chopper client over to the generated classes constructor. Basically, we need to instantiate the chopper client. The best place and the most elegant way to do this is directly inside post API service inside a static function called create, which will return a post API service, which is already set up with the client together with the generated class and all of that good stuff. So we'll be able to call these three methods, these three nice, simple methods from the code in other places of our app so that other places will not need to worry about any of the implementation details about how HTTP requests are made. Our classes will simply be exposed to just these three methods. So let's create a static function, which will return post API service. And it's going to be called create. And over here, we want to instantiate the client first. So final client is equal to chopper client. And this chopper client takes in also a base URL. But we have already specified the base URL over in the chopper API annotation. Well, a good practice is to use the base URL over in the client like this. So here should be just the URL ending with the top level domain.com, for example. And then 
the different endpoints are going to be specified inside the Chopper API annotation. This is good to do because now if you use another endpoint, like for example, comments or users, you can just create multiple services for them, but still use it with the same Chopper client. So let's switch back to posts. Other things which the Chopper client takes in are services. This needs to be a list and the service which we want to pass here is the generated class post API service and it's called with an underscore then dollar sign post API service. This is just to let the Chopper client know which kind of services it's going to work with. And then finally, we want to add a converter here. And for now, we're going to leave it at the default JSON converter, which converts data to and from JSON and adds the application JSON header for the content type. Later on in this series, you're going to learn how to add your custom converter so that you make the type safety possible with your favorite library, whether it be built value or JSON serializable, everything can be done with Chopper. So let's save so that it gets nicely formatted here. And finally, we want to return from this function, the generated post API service with the client passed in this way, calling the static method create will return a fully set up and initialized post API service instance. This is all we are directly going to do with Chopper in this first part. Now what's left is to build the UI. Since this is not a tutorial focused on UI, I will go a bit faster now. I will not type all of the code. If you want to check out the UI code in more detail at your own pace, you can get it from the link in the video description. Inside main.dart, we are going to select everything and delete it. And I'm going to use awesome Flutter snippets to create material app. Definitely get the extension awesome Flutter snippets if you don't have it already. It's really awesome. And with that, we are going to delete the scaffold from here so that it doesn't clutter up our code. Instead, we're going to specify home page, which is currently not present yet. We're going to create it in just a bit. Home page will display the list of all posts. More importantly, what we want to do is to wrap the whole material app with a provider. So instead of returning material app, we are just going to copy it from here or actually cut it and return provider. So let's import the package provider and provider is a simple way to facilitate inherited widget. It takes in a builder which is a function taken in a build context. And whenever you do not need a parameter, you can just name it with an underscore to save space. And this provider will provide the post API service to all of the widgets down the widget tree. And since this provider will wrap the whole material app, every single page and widget in our app will be able to access the post API service to make HTTP requests. And how do we create the post API service? Well, it's simple. We're just going to use the create method on it. So post API service imported here. And we just want to call create and that's it. But just calling create is not enough. We also need to handle what is going to happen on dispose. If you are not using provider, you would do this disposal, obviously inside the state full widgets dispose method. But since we are using provider, we have a shorthand here. We do not need to use state full widget and inside this pose, which takes in also a context and then post API service service, which is the instance instantiated in the builder. We want to call service dot client, which is the chopper client dot dispose. This will release all of the now unneeded resources. And finally, we are going to specify the child to be the material app. And let's move over to home page. We are going to create a new file homepage.dart. So just briefly on the home page, 
it's first going to add all of the import statements also for the single post page which we are going to create in just a little while and the class homepage which is a stateless widget actually will hold first the floating action button which whenever it's pressed it's going to access the post api service from the provider and it's going to call post post method with some fake data key value pair simply a map this is the function inside post api service which we have created which takes in a map annotated with a body it returns a future containing a response and since we cannot really add new posts to the database on the server because it's only a placeholder api we are simply going to print whatever is inside the responses body this will print it to the console what's important to remember here is this syntax provider of specify the type of post api service this is how we are always going to access our api service whenever we try to access it from the widgets of our app having the pose request performed we are now going to move on to the body of the scaffold which will be built inside a separate function build body that will contain a future builder because this body will contain if you remember the list of all posts and this is gotten by calling the get request on the api since all of the methods return futures containing responses we are gonna use a future builder inside the body because future builder is perfect for easily building ui when awaiting a future and the object held inside future is response so as soon as build body is being built we want to call get posts on the post api service and specify it as the future of the future builder and then whenever the state of the future changes this builder of the future builder will run and here if the connection state is done which means that the future has already ended and the data was successfully gotten from the server over to our app we want to access the json string contained inside the response which came from the server and if you are not sure where the response is actually located inside this builder snapshots data is the response this snapshot async snapshot is holding a response so data on the snapshot is of type response dynamic on this data representing the response we can access many things including a body string but also we can access the base response body bytes headers which were sent together with the response from the server and also the status code so for example 200 for ok or 404 not found and so on response contains all of these kinds of things so snapshot data is the response we want to access its body string and convert it using the json decode into some manageable dart objects because we cannot work with json strings directly we need to convert it first to dart objects and of course again we are missing type safety here because we are only converting it into a list dynamic later on you are going to learn how to use real dart types so that you don't just work with dynamic data which can lead to a bunch of errors down the line especially in bigger apps and once we have the list of posts we are going to build them inside a separate method called build posts this will return a list view and the posts are passed in here as a parameter we obviously need to specify the item count for the list view which is the length of the post list and then we are getting to the interesting stuff we are specifying the item builder and all of the posts will be displayed inside a card which will hold a list style and here we set the title and subtitle of the list style to be a text and we get to the title and the body of the post because every single post has a title and a body 
and because we are only inside the list dynamic, we need to trust that we are not gonna get any runtime errors, that's the nature of dynamic, but even through this dynamic mess, which we are going to fix later on in this series, we can uh, get the particular index inside the list, because we are inside an item builder which passes down an index, and then we want to access the title as a map, and also the body can be accessed by specifying the key for the map. And finally, this list style can be tapped, which is going to call navigate to post, and navigate to post will be a method taken in an ID, and the post's ID can also be accessed on the post map, because every post, in addition to title and a body, also has its ID over in the JSON object here. And we are going to use this ID to specify the ID for the get request to get only the single post. If you remember, we have set up an ID parameter for the get post method, and this is precisely where we want to get that ID passed in. Fetching of the single post will happen inside single post page. So this is it for the home page. Let's actually import it inside main.dart so that we do not have an error here. And now we can get to the single post page. So let's again create a new file, single post page. Dart. And this will be really quick. We just need to import all of the packages here. And then the single post page stateless widget will take in a post ID through the constructor because we want to use this post ID inside the build method inside the future builder. Once we get the post API service through the help of the provider, we're going to call get post on it and pass in the particular post ID, which comes from this field. And then again, we are inside a future builder, so we need to specify the builder. And once the future is finished and all of the data is successfully gotten from the API, we again access the response as the data of the async snapshot, because again, data is the response. And we get its body string, which is the JSON string, and we call JSON.decode. Then whatever is returned by this JSON.decode, we put it inside a post map. So again, dynamic data here. I know it's ugly, it's bad, but we are going to fix it later. And also, if I haven't mentioned previously in the home page, if the connection state is not done, we display a circular progress indicator even inside the home page here, just so that the user knows that something's going on in the background. And then inside build post, we simply create a column containing two text widgets, which display the post's title and the post's body. This was just a quick run through the UI, so if you want to get through it at your own pace, be sure to read the written tutorial available from resocoder.com by clicking on the link in the video description. Also, over there is the full source code available from GitHub. Now we can launch the app by hitting F5, and here we go, we have a functional app which displays those 100 posts inside a list view and we can click on an item inside the list view and it's going to perform an additional post or get request to get the single post. And we can also click this plus floating action button and it's going to print inside the console the value returned from the API and it seems that the response from the API is simply whatever we have passed in through the request, because inside home page, we are posting a simple map containing key and then value key value pair. And then it also adds an ID 101 to that key value pair, which we have sent in. So this is the response printed over here inside the floating action buttons on pressed function. So if we try once more, yeah, it always responds with key value and ID is 101. 
This is it for the first part and if you do not want to miss the next parts of this chopper series on Flutter, definitely subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you are going to join the notification squad and not miss any of my new tutorials and other videos. Because here on ResoCoder, I am determined to provide you with the best app development tutorials and resources out there. If this video helped you, give it a like and also share it with other developers. Remember that the written tutorial together with all of the code and the project files is available from the link in the video description on resocoder.com. Leave a comment if you have anything to say, follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and see you in the next video.